On this episode of Function Beast, I install upper control arms and sway bars on the 350Z. Spray PB Blaster on the nuts and bolts for the upper control arm. Now use an electrician's dike to remove the ball joint cotter pin. An impact gun really helps remove the ball joint nut. Break the chassis bolts loose with a long wrench but switch to a ratcheting one after. The bolts seem to run into the field coilovers. Flexing the coilover out of the way gives you just enough room to remove the bolt. Do the same for the other bolt. This side is tight to the coilover as well. Eventually, you can wrestle it loose. And remove the factory control arm. Now throw in that adjustable upper control arm from Phase 2 Motor Trend. Unbolt the coilover to make it easier to put the control arm bolts in. You still have to wrestle with these tight clearances. Then reinstall the coilover. Put the ball joint in place and then begin to tighten the chassis bolts. Tighten the ball joint nut using a large Allen socket and a wrench. Set a base camber and tighten down the adjustment bolts. Now slowly rotate the castle nut until it's in the perfect position to install a cotter pin. It may take a few tries. dikes to pull the cotter pin through and bend it and clip it as needed. Now onto the front sway bar. Unbolt and remove the front splash guard. 
Unbolt the end link. Use an Allen key and a pass-through socket wrench for this. Unbolt the sway bar bracket from the frame rail. We are reusing the bracket but not the bushing. Remove the end link from the sway bar. Now install the end link into the new sway bar. Wrap the sway bar in Teflon tape where it contacts the bushing. Grease the new bushing. Attach the bushing to the sway bar. Put the end links in place and tighten the bracket to the chassis. Now tighten the end links down and you're done. I should put that plastic splash guard back in, but I'm not gonna. Perfect. Yep. Now we move to the rear sway bar where the procedure is exactly the same as the front. Yes. <laughs>